So we're back uh, in the hardball section, uh, part of at the table, and uh, we're slowly getting there. And we're going to start to deal with some of the specific instances, um, beginning with lying. And uh, the next few sheets, uh, basically, what I'm doing is I'm going to look at what's okay, what's not okay, and um, and then some of the contentious areas, and then talk a little bit about um, about some tips in terms of how to deal with lying, how to detect it, whether we can or not, and how to deflect uh, questions and things like that when you don't want to lie, etc. So, uh, but most of it's on the boards here, and so I'm not. It's not my intention to to read it. I mean, you've got sheets there in front of you, and uh, and you can. Think that most of it's pretty straightforward. This is what what's okay here, and uh, you know things like hard bargaining and et cetera, et cetera, not disclosing bottom lines, and um, and I think most of it uh, makes uh, makes for easy reading and, and something that you can understand, uh, and something we see using um, quite often. Um, and there's always exceptions, you know, selectively disclosing accurate information, and all these situations where. We can, uh, by failing to not um, provide information, we can do make a misrepresentation through those omissions, and uh, generally not required to answer questions, and puffing up to the line, whatever that is, um, and some limited emotional manipulation. Um, I think quite a bit of emotional. <laughs> I don't know why I put limited in there. I guess I'm being impacted a bit by the um, by the Alberta rules, uh, which uh, you know when they go to conduct. Maybe overreaching a little bit. I'm not sure, but uh, in any event, um, so at the other end we've got materiality. I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not going to tell lawyers uh, well, what what's illegal. I've used the term materiality. It's assertiveness and specificity. It's reliance. Um, you can do it about specific intentions or needs. And you know, you're, I need money to to go uh, uh, to go you know go to school and take the money. In fact, you're going to Mexico or something like that or something you know is flatly contradicted. Uh, it's an example they give as somebody's uh, selling a business and they say, oh, you know, the main purchaser is uh, going to be dealing with you when you know as a matter of fact that it's not. Um, and, uh, well, that's an opinion or not. But in any event, that, that, the, the, the illegal end I'm going to leave to you as lawyers. Um, and the contentious area um, is, uh, you know, it's, it's um, most of these areas, I think, as lawyers, uh, we can't do. Uh, that would be my view on it. Final offers, authority. Authority is specifically addressed in the Alberta um, regulations. I didn't take it to there. Lack of knowledge of circumstances. Um, lies about bluffs and other offers. Uh, you know, I can get it cheaper elsewhere. I have another buyer coming in. Maybe that would be material, but uh, it might not cross the line. Um, um, the misleading partial disclosure and omissions. Um, yeah, certainly by emissions, and uh, it depends, but uh, you know, uh, as to opinions on future consequences, likely to be false, mm, not so sure, but in any event, opinions is another area, as we know. Uh, corrected lies that are corrected by writing contracts that are advising the party, I think that's very sharp practice, and lawyers certainly shouldn't do that. Uh, lies about needing cooperation from the other party to make the deal, we're going to talk about this false, uh, false status and false needs and lies on desiring or not of interest, and we're going to see this when we talk about uh, multi-interests and, and basically the, the bogey, the briar patch things we're going to talk about, uh, give nice labels of Jiggy News, but g generally my, my view is you can't do those things, and, and they are happening. Uh, they're very hard to catch, aren't they? So uh, that's the problem as we see. We mentioned in, uh, maybe we didn't mention, I took that slide out, but anyway, the real problem is, is can you, you know, is can you catch half this stuff, and, and, and the reality is you can't. Uh, so it's really up to your own uh, conscience in many, many respects. And as well, certainly dealing with things like mediations, there's all the challenges of being able to prosecute it to, to go ahead with it because uh, well, it's supposed to be off the record there and um, mediators sign contracts saying you can't drag us into into court uh, and if you do, you're going to have to pay all our expenses, etc., etc., and who knows what. But I'm just saying that uh, to a certain extent, I see these things going on, but as professionals, we shouldn't be doing it. And in the end, if you do do it, uh, you'll be the loser. Uh, over the long run, that's certainly my feeling. Um, avoiding lying, um, you know, these are one of the problems we had. Somebody asked you these questions, and, and, and what do you do? And, and uh, Richard Schell, uh, in his book, once again, i um, taking quite a bit from, from it in many respects, but he certainly, his view is, and I think he's right, whatever you do, don't lie. So, uh, 
get around it. And so he offers these uh, suggestions out of bounds, and, which I think is a fair one. Uh, you know, I don't answer questions with respect to my bottom line or whatever it is. I mean, that's, uh, that's, a, that's certainly fair. Answering different questions truthfully, hey, uh, politicians do it, it can't be that bad. Um, but, uh, and, then the f and your failure to answer the questions, as I said, anybody with half a brain out there should see the questions not being answered, and uh, you've almost you've got your answer in any event. The Dodge, um, I think his example is, um, uh, uh, well, I'm actually waiting for you to give me the, your, uh, you know, a meaningful offer here, basically trying to knock you off stride. Uh, delaying is a dirty one, eh? Public servants use it all the time. Oh, it drives you crazy. You all get back to you on that, and they never do. Uh, having said that, uh, I shouldn't be ranting about public servants, but delaying in, uh, is, is a tactic that's used a lot. Um, it doesn't work very well in negotiations, but you hope it goes away. And preempting, I'm not sure what preempting is. Uh, sort of, yeah, that's the question I was going to ask. Uh, I was hoping uh, to ask you. In any event, the idea is that you. At the bottom line, you try not to answer answer the questions. As I said, sharp people will pick it up, other than the out of bounds, which is uh, you know, uh, which is the fair answer uh, in many many respects. Uh, can we detect lies? Um, not from good liars. <laughs> you can detect liars from ethical people because uh, they don't like lying, and when they do lie, they it's all written uh, you know large all over their face. So. Sure, from the people that don't lie, um, you can detect lying. But from the people that are really uh, good, good at it, not a chance. Uh, Madoff is our best example. Hey, Forty years, best friends, thousands of people never, never, never picked it up. Um, and and all the research shows that most people are incompetent uh, liars. There's, I, I know there's um, the books uh, out there that suggesting that you can do that, but it's, uh, I think it's pretty tough. Um, and and I guess. Uh, yeah, accomplished liars know what people are looking for, and it's and it's built into there. I mean, the liars have got something. They got a dead spot in their brain. Let's face it, eh? uh, these people. I mean, they clearly are. You know, there's something. There's something that's not working out there, and uh, maybe they think that this is the way to get ahead. And in and, and false ways, I suppose it is to a certain extent. But but uh, what we see is, is advocates cross-examining. We know the really really tough witnesses are the ones that are tell the truth on every point except the the key one. Cases tend to turn around uh, two or three really key, key points. It's really amazing how little really relevant evidence can decide a piece of litigation. Um, in any event, the answer is no. Um, I think I wouldn't rely upon it. What are the biases there? Well, I'm afraid the human condition is, is not great. One of our greatest failures is our tendency to, um, to impute bad faith to people. Uh, which has as kind of the converse that we're very nice to ourselves. And, and quite frankly, I think it's like it's one of the great human failings. Uh, when you hear people imputing bad faith, uh, I did this, that, and doing that, and uh, intention, you don't know what's going on in the brains of other people, for one, all right? And, uh, and it's not helpful. And people that do that and do it regularly with a really sound basis, basically, the converse of that is they're going to be very gentle on themselves, and they're going to use the fact that they are imputing bad faith all over the place to justify what they're doing. All right? So, so it's uh, it's a sad uh, it's a sad aspect. But uh, you should check yourself to see if you're somebody who's always imputing bad faith to somebody you don't know. Most problems mediators find are caused by uh, unmet expectations due to poor communications, and that's what it is. And then you get in one of these downward spirals, and people start doing all. As soon as you get into a downward spiral, I mean the rules all change. Everybody's you know acting unreasonably, and, and there's no no accounting for it. Um, so, but I'm trying. Uh, but I guess the bias supporting a bit of a rant here, I suppose. But the bias supporting uh, uh, lying is that they're doing it, and uh, why not me? And uh, I'm not really lying. I mean, saying that I have uh, an offer coming in this afternoon for two hundred fifty thousand dollars is a little bit of a white lie, you know, really. Ah. Um, and then, and then the, con the, con the contrary side is it is when people do lie. You don't confront them because uh, we don't like to. We don't like to confront people. It's part of our nature. Uh, and and. Um, and also, it's uh, you get away with it a little bit uh, more than you should. So there's some of the biases that support lying, why it's going on. Best defenses. Best defenses. You, you really gotta sort of look at the whole picture and and determine is this a situation where lying is likely to take place. Um, certainly, as lawyers, we always start with kind of the logic of the situation. Does the whole thing flow? Is there something that, that's out of uh, missing in the in, in the whole context? And if there is, I mean, we stop. 
right there. We stop right there. We will not go beyond that point. Uh, because if there's something that's missing somewhere that doesn't make sense in, in the whole story, forget about it. Um, you've lost us completely, uh, and, and we're, we're uh, completely on our defensive. Are the stakes high? You know, everybody has their price, and, and that's, the, uh, you know, that's the reality. Um, how important is the information uh, and, and persuasion and the outcome? You know, I'm telling you, the deal where somebody says that they're, uh, you know, they've got somebody coming in uh, and they've got a signed sign agreement there in front of you for the, to buy the house, and they're asking you to match it, hey, uh, you know, that's really important information. So a, a lie of that order is really important. And, and, uh, and, and you know, that's kind of uh, where that information is important, and that's where lies will take place. Um, are there perceptions of being uninformed and unknowledgeable? Going in to get your car repaired. <laughs> Information disadvantage. Um, uh, leverage disadvantage. Can lies be verified? Will lies be caught? Going in to get your car repaired. Um, and will lies be punished? So these are all factors that you kind of have to read into there. And there is some in intuition. I'm not saying that you can't uh, you know, read faces, etc., etc. But you're better to kind of look at the context and see where it's going because uh, it'll certainly help you. But you the rule in, in bargaining is always a caveat, lawyer, ca caveat, party. You back into everything. You take. You have to be careful about everything that's in front of you because when money's involved, and I tell you, this is many, many years of mediation. People kind of will just do the strangest things for money. Uh, I'm sorry to say, uh, it uh, you know, it's self-interest triumphs of morality all the time, and and we see it up front even in short gains. And people will, uh, when when money's involved, um, it's amazing what they'll do. It's sad, actually. Um, tactics to defend, prepare, obviously, research, background, um, ask probing questions. Questions, just asking the questions, and they don't answer. We've just given you an example. They don't answer the question. Hey, you've got lots of information there. Trust but verify. Uh, you can try to set special ground rules for bargaining. Uh, you know, the ones we were just talking about there with fellow lawyers, no lying uh, on, on uh, final offers, no lying on authority. Uh, if you were to set that out to the lawyers, I think because we, we don't really know what the rules are. It's, it's all fuzzy fuzzy. We, we know that deception is part of the game intuitively and we see other people doing it and nobody's really told us they can't do it, etc, etc. I think if you set those rules out, um, people who are doing this, it, it will work, but not against, uh, not against a, a really a serious liar. It's not going to have any impact at all. Include relevant representations and written terms. I've already indicated that's what you should do. Um, take good notes, absolutely, and try to turn the other party. And, and the, the books, uh, some of the reference materials I'm going to give you at the end, there's, you know, there's stacks of stuff in there, how you try to do this. As a mediator, uh, my favorite and, and truthful a statement that I make to the parties when I see these two completely contradictory stories, somebody's lying. As I say, you should understand the judges in the end will get it right. The judges will get it right. That's like 95% of the time the judges will get it right. So I'm, I can't do that today because, you know, I have cross-examination, blah, blah, blah. But I'm just telling you, whoever is not telling the truth here, in the end, it's not going to work. So, you know. And the other side knows you're not telling the truth, so they're going to hang in there because in the end they're going to win. And I'm telling you, lie in front of a judge, you're probably going to lose your case. It's very powerful, <laughs> and it works. So if your mediators are listening, you can try that one as well. Um, so I, that's, uh, that's the, uh, the, 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 my, my little speech on lying. Don't do it, basically, and, and uh, be on your guard is what it comes down to. Uh, authority. We're running out of time already. Authority. Um, authority is not really uh, what I would call uh, something that's unethical. Uh, I, mean, I don't think it's caught by the rules, certainly in, in uh, Alberta, et cetera, et cetera, and, and screening. But I just think it's so important and it's so misunderstood that I, I want to get across the disadvantages that you have when, the, when particularly when the decision maker is not there, because that's where, where, it, where, the, where it comes down to authority and screening, because that's really where it's all done. Um, uh, if, if the decision maker is not there, the negotiator is there, he, he lacks or she lacks information, so you're not going to get information right, which you need. Um, the negotiator may be misinformed on a resistance point, and I'm telling you, the part of the mindset game is to make the expectation point what you have to battle for, all right? Even though you'll, and you'll, and you'll be satisfied with something that goes beyond the resistance point. So already they've, 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 they've got an advantage on, on the person who thinks the resistance point uh, uh, is uh, that the expectation point uh, is, is what they think is the re resistance point, if I got that right. The decision maker, of course, cannot be influenced. Right? So who's have done all one of these long mediations, you work something out with the representative, you phone the guy up and, well, what, was, what seems to be the problem here? And, uh, you know, uh, they have great opportunity to, to manipulate the timing and the delay, so they've sort of got control of the process. 
um, they got the last opportunity to review offers. It's a great advantage. You know, it comes all up. This is as far as we've gone. We need your authority. It gives credence to a final offer. You know, we just talked about how, how do we shore up our final offer to make people think it's really a final offer. We've had to go and seek higher authority. Wow, it must be it. And you've got the psychological third-party decision-maker, like they're sitting above everybody else. I'm telling you, it's, it's, just, uh, it's, 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 it's a situation that I don't think people fully comprehend. And as a mediator, I've got to sit there and take it all in, but uh, it's not what I would uh, go along with. So how do you get out of it? Well, I don't know. It's, it's, it's difficult, uh, all right? Certainly you can discuss the disadvantages. In this, <laughs> this, anybody listening to this will certainly know those disadvantages. Uh, you, you can question availability and get details and authority. Like, 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 why is this person here? Why can't the other person listen in, at least on the phone, with the whole thing? I mean, you know, why shouldn't, why shouldn't they participate? Why should there be somebody else up there with the, you know? Uh, you can prohibit any mention of authority. I don't want to hear a single word about authority, okay? If you don't have authority, too bad, okay? You, you do what you have to do, all right? But, but don't come to me and say, I don't have authority, because it's, it's really, it's a, it's a great persuading tactic. And insist on the right of the mediator, maybe yourself, but on the right of the mediator to, uh, to talk to a decision maker. I once forced my way in and sort of said, you know, I'd like to, uh, and I really, and they said no. And I said, I think it's a right, I'm entitled to talk. And that lawyer has been after me ever since. I shouldn't have had to do that, okay? Uh, it didn't do anything. Um, but mind you, in the end, they settled for exactly what we, were, what we had there. But uh, that's beside the point. Um, but uh, the, the, uh, the reality is I shouldn't have to do that. You, you go to work for it. Get the mediator in there. I mean, we've sort of been through the whole process. We're neutral. We can, uh, you haven't been here, you know, we can sort of kind of work at it uh, better than you can uh, to a certain extent. But uh, it's a problem, all right? So maybe I've drawn your attention to that. Um, where are we here now? Uh, so if other ones, untimely disclosure or bearing disclosure or relevant information. Uh, um, Overproduction, hey, uh, what can we say about that? That's really kind of, you know, it's there. Non-disclosure or late disclosure, the only thing I want to get across here, okay, is, is should you go ahead with the mediation when there's late disclosure or non-disclosure that you find out about during the mediation? And I tell you, if you understand leverage, leverage is who needs the deal most, and, and it's a strong thing, by going ahead, you're basically signaling the other side yeah, um, we want to get this done, all right? And so you're tipping your hand. So I'm just saying that. Uh, I, I, think, I think make them pay the price. Uh, that's what I would do. And it's killer if, if your client is uh, doing this. And, you know, who knows? Uh, you're going to say, I'm going to bring this up in the final analysis. I want my costs on this or whatever else it is. And, and we'll see it. We'll argue before the judge. And I'm, blah, 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 you know? But uh, I'm just saying that's uh, one of the problems that you have there. Um, okay, so now we're into offer uh, offer tactics, and I'm going to continue for a bit on this, but I know we're running out of time here. The uh, the outrageous offer. Um, uh, how, how do you measure an outrageous offer? I think just the point I want to make is, is, you, is you do it against your resistance point, not your expectation point, because sometimes you're so focused on your expectation point uh, that uh, things will seem... Uh, you know, uh, outrageous no matter what it is, but but um, the, the 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 reality is, look, that's when you use your resistance point. Um, and uh, the thing about uh, an outrageous offer is, it's not unethical, but it's a tip. It's a tip off that things are coming. All right, it means they're going to be aggressive. Uh, uh, they have have a long term strategy which usually goes with it, and they're prepared to use an, uh, other unethical uh, uh, tactics. So just hey, I mean, we may not get this done because we're dealing with somebody who's extremely. Uh, who has these this, this strategy and these tactics, and that's the reality. And tell your client, too bad. Um, how it works: one party, multiple party. One party, they're trying to anchor. Obviously, we've already talked about that. But they're trying to do more. They're they're trying to kind of influence and make you reevaluate your resistance point completely. Uh, forget about trying to set it. Um, and 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 then they're trying to induce kind of these emotions in, into into how you how you negotiate. They want to. Either anxiety, it depends on what your makeup is. Depression, if you're pessimistic, giving up, it's the kind of, it's that's what they're trying to get at, and, and they're going to do it over time, all right? So that's the one party. The multiple co parties, we've already indicated, they're trying to leverage the fact that uh, everybody else wants to settle and, and they're going to take advantage of that. Um, responses, one party, questions, um, you know, the, the, these are, the, I've already been through this basically, questions on undisclosed information or to provide a better breakdown. Don't ask them to justify it. Call it the tactic, yes. Uh, and then, um, you know, go back and make a real offer or we're gone, or go back with 
you know, with something equally outrageous, or go back with the offer before if you've already made it, not change it. Uh, and without saying anything, you know, this, here it is, you know, you deal with it now, it's your problem. And multi-party, get them out. Uh, get the person out and uh, work to isolate and see what you can, uh, we've got some rules over there that we can work with as lawyers, which can put a lot of the pressure on them. But don't let the person stay in there and participate and get all the information, help on leverage and everything else. Out, 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 that's kind of the rule for that, for the... Uh, for the um, outrageous offer and, and, and a group of people who want to deal with it. Um, and the add-on, I think this will be the last one I'm going to do here. Uh, basically, it's we add on, you know, you basically you get a commitment uh, and then when it comes to close, they add something else. And, and it's basically a balance of the initial request and getting so attractive, you gain the commitment and then versus the second request, but it's not so, not so outrageous uh, that the deal won't close. In other words, and, um, and you go ahead and do it. Recognize the tactic, hold back, <laughs> have your own add on to go back with it. All right, call for a final offer in writing, uh, uh, and basically the mediator should intervene. They won't get by me, that's for sure. Uh, I'll say, no, no, you can't do that. That's an add on, that's improper. Uh, and they're quite surprised, I'm so sorry, uh, but that's uh, kind of the rules that we work by here in, uh, in our jurisdiction. So I'm going to stop here, and we'll come back in the next video and uh, finish up on, uh, on the uh, hardball tactics and do a closing a little bit and give you some reference. We should be done. See you next. Uh, see you in the next video.